Good evening, everyone. This is an aerothermal engineering presentation, and we worked on developing a facility to calibrate aerodynamic probes. So I spent eight weeks of my summer working here. This is the Whistle Laboratory in West Cambridge, one of the world's leading research labs in turbo machinery and improving their aerodynamic performance. The reason we want to improve the turbo, ma turbo machinery performance is, I hope, the same reason that we do everything, which is to combat the ever-growing threat of the climate emergency. If we think that the most obvious turbo machine is the jet engine, then you can see that jet, en jet engines and jet aeroplanes have actually increased in efficiency massively over the past decades. But emissions from aviation have been shooting up, and that's because of the huge increase in passenger numbers flying. We can do more to make aeroplanes more efficient and bring down carbon emissions. Obviously, there is also a very valid debate as to what place aeroplanes have at all in a net zero world. But aeroplanes aren't the only turbo machine. Heat pumps to heat our house more efficiently. Air conditioning systems that we need to survive in a warmer world. Nuclear power plants to get cleaner energy. These are all turbo machines that need to be more efficient. And to make a turbo machine more efficient, you need to be able to measure the flow for it, the flow of air for it. You do, you do this using a pressure probe. Um, a commonly used one is a multi-hole probe. It consists of five hypodermic needles, basically joined together, soldered together. But you can't join these five needles together perfectly. So you, your probe, always ends up measuring something slightly different to the direct properties of the flow. That's why we need to calibrate the aerodynamic probes after they've made. And that's what this machine is designed for. This is the probe calibration facility in the Whittle lab. It was designed by a fourth year student back in 2023. Um, automated machine controlled through a computer interface and it automatically calibrates a five-hole probe. You can put the probe in and it will calibrate it. In the past, you had to do a whole bunch of manual steps. This avoids it. The goal of the internship was to finish this machine, make it available for use, make it so that anyone could go up and use it. So this required mechanical improvements to the machine. Some of them, not especially pretty, but, but important. This meant, so this means stuff like making sure the battery packs are actually in a complete unit with the machine, making sure it can be pushed around the lab, making sure it fits everywhere, making sure it's compatible with all the systems in the lab. So we designed components, manufactured them, 3D printed, used cabs, completely replaced all the cabling, all the parts, improved it massively mechanically so that anyone could just go up and use it. Similarly with software, this, as I said, is an automated machine. There's a MATLAB interface, a code interface. You can go up, there's a screen, you press buttons and it works. So we added extra functionality to that code, made it easier to use, made sure anyone could understand it. And this was the final result. Um, much so, as I said, made sure it fit everywhere. And we also ran loads of experiments to make sure everything worked as it's supposed to. Making sure the jet flow through this wind tunnel that the probe sits in is uniform. Making sure everything behaves as expected. So here it is in action. Um, these components were all completely new, milled in, CNC milled in metal. Um, that also completely new, the battery shelf. We added functionality to align the probes automatically. It's a bit loud, I'll turn it off. Anyway, so why is this important? 
Calibrating probes take time. Um, this machine makes you can put in the pro means you can put in the probe and calibrate it automatically without a laborious process. It still takes time, but there are companies, innovative companies that we're working with that are currently working on 3D printing probes. 3D printing tiny millimeter pieces. That means we don't have to solder the four, five needles together. This means that ideally, we can have loads of probes absolutely identical to each other. You calibrate them once and use the same calibration data for all those probes. Dr. Grimshaw, my supervisor, and his colleague, Dr. Clark, wrote a paper on nine hole probes using nine needles in a probe instead of a five hole probe. That allows you to measure non-uniform fit flows, much more complex flows than a five hole probe can do. The problem with a nine hole probe now is that it takes three months to calibrate. But if you could 3D print a nine hole probe so that they're all identical, put it into an automatic machine and just leave it to calibrate from itself, suddenly you can spend three months calibrating a probe once and then have this master probe that can calibrate anything, that can measure any flow. So we worked on 3D printed designs of these very innovative tiny probes. We also did bigger probes. These are for demonstration purposes. And in one of the most rewarding parts of the project, we had a summer school we had a summer school from Japan come to visit the lab. Sixth form students from Japan. We demonstrated these probes in the probe calibration facility we had just finished, showing them basic aerodynamic principles, showing them how it works, inspiring them to work in engineering, in, aer in aerospace, and also to combat climate change. The, six, the eight weeks were a hugely rewarding experience. Approaching engineering, sustainability engineering from an angle that I perhaps hadn't thought of before, but also just working with some of the top engineers in the country, people many times cleverer than I, than I am and ever will be, um, seeing the ways they problem solve, seeing the ways they approach engineering problems. It was an amazing experience. Thank you very much.